Hello, Writing 111. This is week three, a quick uh, update. Uh, from time to time, I might just add a quick update video for the week with any class announcements or small things I want to add after I sort of get a better sense of how you all are doing on your assignments and with the class uh, outcomes. So uh, three quick points for this week I want to add. First is just uh, a obviously a reminder and an, uh, an encouragement to you as you finish our first book, Educated. As you know, it's a lot of reading. Uh, this week, I think, is even more reading than last week as you read the second and third part of the story. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoy it. I just wanted to add that it's interesting to note that in interviews after uh, this book was published, Tara Westover uh made a statement that she is often approached by um, people who have read the book, both people who are from conservative backgrounds and people who are from more liberal backgrounds, and they both uh, find something to connect with in the book. Uh, liberal uh, readers often will say, wow, I'm so proud of you that you escaped your oppressive family. Uh, but conservative uh, readers will often tell her, something along the lines of, I know that you will reconcile one day with your family. Hang in there. Uh, forgiveness and reconciliation is coming. And what's interesting to think about as you read the end of the story is which one of those two things does Tara really point to in the way she writes her story? Does she point to either of them? Does it make sense that readers could come away with either of those possibilities in mind and it fits the way she writes? Just something to think about I thought was interesting when I saw that. Uh, next, uh, second point is uh, a quick update on your writing groups. I have just finished putting a last few students into new writing groups if they were having issues with finding a weekly writing time with that group. So at this point, everyone is in the writing group that they will be in, I hope, for the rest of the semester, and it's more or less set in stone. Um, but I did see on a few exit tickets that some students were not able to attend in uh, either week one or week two, and it may be because of a class or a practice time. So uh, while you're with your group, you need to make sure that everyone in your group is allowed, uh, is capable of meeting at your weekly time every week and have no regular conflicts. Uh, and if you need to adjust your time, you need to do so so that everyone in your group can come. Keep in mind, you don't have to meet on an hour, like 1 or 2 or 3 p.m. You can meet at a half hour or at a quarter hour if that slight adjustment will help some folks be more on time all the time. Um, this is new. You need to attend your group meeting and work on, you need to actually work on the GWA document to get credit for, the doc, uh, for that assignment. This is why I'm having you now put your, the names of the people who have worked on the document uh, on the GWA document so I can see who's worked on it. Let me just make a, one um, piece of advice about this. It may be tempting to put the names of people who did not come to the meeting or did not work on the document on the document because you're, they're in your group and you want to be nice to them. This is not a good idea. Why? Because if you give credit to the students who aren't coming to the meetings or working on the assignment, then you are uh, probably incentivizing them to repeat that same thing. And eventually you are going to be working, doing more of the work uh, on these assignments and they're not going to be pulling, uh, holding up their end of the bargain, doing their part. Um, so it's important in the early part of the course now uh, to tell me who is not attending meetings so I can make adjustments as needed. And everyone later in the semester will be able to pull their weight because they'll be a highly participatory part member of the group. Uh, finally, don't forget that you can email and communicate with each other. E everybody has a George Fox email, um, or you can find other means of communicating. But uh, I, I get the sense that not everybody is on Canvas every day, so maybe that's not the best way to, gra uh, to make sure you're on a quick connection, communicational you know, agreement with other members of your group. So uh, work that out on your own, and always email should be a good strategy because everybody has that, everybody checks that. Okay, the third point I want to make. Um, I was very intrigued by your GWA-2s in which you all, uh, as groups, interpreted Edward Munch's The Dance of Life painting. 
Uh, I read some very interesting interpretations. But one thing kind of underlined, uh, or uh, uh, everybody had the same basic underlying issue, uh, which is to make an interpretation, you need to go a little bit further than saying what the painting is about. And a couple of folks did this a little bit better than others, but most people went not far enough, as it were, in interpreting. Now, in a way, I kind of... Um, picked a painting for this reason, that it's a good illustration of this problem. It's easier to see this when you're doing a painting, right? Now, uh, what I would describe most of what you guys were doing in your GWAs is description. And I have a good uh, basic outline here of three different levels uh, working up to interpretation. So this might be helpful to you as you think about what it means to create an interpretation in a close reading process, because you're going to be doing this same close reading process, the same exact thing, for this week as well on GWA3, uh, but this time you're going to be doing it on passages from uh, Tara Westover's Educated. So this is a tip for uh, getting it a little bit better this time. Uh, this will be hopefully helpful to you. So uh, here we have a summary of what it means, that, what's the difference between simply restating what the text is saying versus describing what it's saying versus analyzing or interpreting what it means. Uh, and so up here we have, um, this is uh, described as, restatement is just, just talking about the original topic. So in the dance of life, you might say something like, this painting has three women in the foreground, just identifying elements of the painting. You're just restating things about it. In a description level, you're describing what the text is doing, identifying aspects of the presentation, so this is very much what you're doing in your close reading process. Step one, observe. This is the kind of stuff you should be doing. So, for instance, many of you identified in the painting that women seem to be, the three women in the front of the painting seem to be the same person or and or pre presenting a kind of timeline of life, a progression from left to right. Very good observation, but that is a description of what, of a aspect of the presentation of the painting. It's describing what the text, the painting is doing. It's not yet analyzing what the text means or asserting an overall meaning of that painting. So to do that, you would need to not only notice that there are three women in the front, not only that they seem to be the same person and have a, a sort of like story they're telling from left to right, but then you need to interpret what the meaning of that story is. And so uh, to do that, you'd have to say something like the painting is suggesting that life is sad or ends in sadness or in loneliness or something like that. You need to see that Munch is trying to make you feel a certain way about this dance of life. You don't want to just say it is a dance of life. That's just restating the title and what's going on in the painting. Uh, what, you, what you want to figure out in interpretation is what it means. Uh, so maybe Munch is making you feel positive about it or negative about it or to offer an insight about it in some way. And that's what raises uh, the observations to the next level of interpretation. Okay, so hopefully this just helps a little bit with conceptualizing what, you're, what you need to do to make that jump to the interpretive level. All right, I hope that helps. Um, have a great week three. Email me any questions. Uh, good luck working on any final adjustments to your groups and enjoy the rest of educating.